Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, then, to not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. 
Caldara de Baranzi of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. Such a question, as though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance, a humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife, see why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her violence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months time and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an Animancer who helped one find the other, turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Of course, dear. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Hi? Hmm? Seventeen and a half. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack I took you for a radric at first. Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. There'd be any number of radric bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, radric especially. Come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. 
Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. No offense. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the phone. Used to be my captain during the war. We blew him up. We blew him up. Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. But, truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. Long as you're not the one picking the sights.
Well met, friend. Good day to you. Hi. Indeed. <laughs> it is. Well, not the wall itself, perhaps. The construction is very traditional. There are names scratched upon some of the bricks, just there. Workers and masons, I expect, carving a little immortality for themselves. It's a fine keep, Cad Noir. Two centuries to its name, and abandoned for nearly as long. But the truly interesting part is in there, and I haven't had much luck in reaching the keep itself. I hoped to find the master of this place, a man by the name of Meerwald. But it seems that he either holds his privacy most dear, or else has been devoured by his house guests. Oh, truly? Then perhaps we can help one another. 
The grounds are infested with all manner of beasts. I've never seen the like. I didn't want to risk it alone, but you seem capable. Together, I'm sure we could manage it. And then we can both ask our questions of Merewald. I seek a great treasure, you see. Not gold or silver, but the Tanvi Oratoa. You might call it the Book of Virtues. It's a sacred text of the Rauatai, but we possess only a fragment of it. A year I've journeyed in search of the rest, and I uncovered evidence that leads me to believe the original lies just there, beneath the keep. Excellent. Lead on, my friend, and I will be at your heels. Ah! Wait. Speaking of that, I ought to warn you first. Wondrous teeth, I nearly forgot. I have, at times, been followed. It began in Adir, and in Exomital they attacked outright. I believe they do not wish for me to find what I am looking for. I say believe, but I have been told as much by one of my would-be assassins. <laughs> I pay them little mind. Humorless swords in long robes, but it's why I bought the sword, you see. And it's only fair that you should know. <laughs> I'm glad you're not discouraged. Come then. Who knows what we will find inside? On your word. Yes? Hmm? Indeed. Yeah? Looks like this place has been abandoned for years. Grave Dalfilathilim. Philothelium. Grave down Philothelium. to you! You can't do this! This is our village, our home! The Nine Claws have lived here almost fifty generations. We were here long before your kind brought war to our lands. You can't just burn it all! 
<laughs> have mercy, soldier! Our warriors have all gone! <laughs> you can't burn us all because of them! <laughs> Yeah? Brave thou feelest the leave. Brave thou feelest the leave. Stand still! Let's have it out! These ones are in for a walloping! Hmm? Raved out philosophy leaves. This one. Hmm? I? Huh? Huh? Yeah? Well, that's, uh, unusual. Brave Dalphilothelim. Yeah? Oh, 
Right. Grave thou philosophy. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Another watcher in Cadnua, glowing very brightly indeed to these eyes. What strange happenstance. As am I. If you should happen to find him, I would be glad to know of it. Each day his absence brings new dust to my halls, new cracks to my stones. It's... it's shameful is what it is. The Earl would never have let it come to this. You are free to search for him here. I will unbar the way. Not as a land is its laws. More as a child is its mother's. This castle was my design, you see. The Earl appointed me to do it. I was getting on in years. I knew it would be my only chance to build something magnificent. When it was built, I couldn't bring myself to part from it. To go back to my lonely home. I begged the Earl to let me stay, to take care of it. It was all I wanted, and he granted it. Years later, when Bareth Sasha finally came calling, I begged the Earl to find a way to let me remain. And so he did. He was a great man. He came here one day, young with long hair and polished armor, and he banished the dark things that had come to lurk in this place after centuries of neglect. He could see the beauty of this place, the way it had been. So he claimed it for his own when no one else would take it. We worked together to restore it. But he began to grow distant some time ago. He never told me why. He retreated deeper and deeper into the keep, never leaving, sending servants for food, hiding himself from my sight. The restoration stopped. Now to look at the place, you'd never know the progress we'd made. In most places it's worse than it ever was. And all I can do is watch it crumble around me. I can feel his presence faintly somewhere deeper inside the keep. But he uses his gifts to confound me, and my senses are dulled while he does so. I only wish I could know his mind. Imprisoned? At times it feels that way, I suppose. But it's more that I reside here. The throne was brought up from the ruins, one of the first things they found. As a last favor to a dying woman, the Earl arranged for me to be moved into it. Audra is an accommodating vessel for a soul. Oh, it's not as confining as it seems. I can feel the whole keep from here, and all things that are tied to it. There's something about this throne and its construction. Or maybe it's something about this place. The Earl of Yenwood. The original, in fact, when Deerwood was a colony. He found this site, the only ruin Air Glanfarth refused to defend, and he believed its wealth would be great. The keep was his way of defending his family's claim, and that claim became his obsession. He had to know what lay beneath. He devoted his life to excavating the ruins below the keep. They had been sealed with rock and soil. Deliberately, it would seem. Years passed, and with them the Earl. He dug his entire life and never found what he sought. His obsession became his sons and his sons' sons. And one day, that young Earl broke through. An endless maze, incomprehensible in its construction. But he would never come to learn more than that. Vile things had taken residence there. Vile and dangerous. They poured up through the keep and slew its residents. 
the Earl among them. After that, the keep remained abandoned, unused, wasted. Meowall's mastery of this place was the first hope I'd had in 200 years. How I've longed to see it as it once was. I can only guess why all this has happened. I fear I've wronged the gods putting this place here, and they've doomed me to watch it wear away into dust. To witness my own folly. Take care in your search. Many dangers lie in wait here. <laughs>